I'm going to go with the 4-3-3. So the three in midfield, I'm going to do them at the same time, just to save some time. It was tough, you know, Liverpool have got some decent midfielders. Dominic's quite good. I'm not going to try and pronounce his surname. McAllister, you know, he's shown some glimpses here and there. But for me, it's going to have to be the Chelsea trio. We're going to go with Gallagher, Enzo and Caicedo. I think for me, they're the best balanced midfield arguably in the league they've got to be the three in midfield so no debates there again Liverpool Endo you know was a shout but he's just a knockoff Enzo so can't really put him in there um, and then the front Darwin Nunez hit the post four times uh, that is a Premier League record look at that 28 shots 13 on target compared to Chelsea's uh, four what does that mean well take a look at the Premier League table of course Arsenal won yesterday didn't they at Forest meanwhile Manchester City with that victory against Burnley today, they are still five points adrift of Liverpool at the top of the table. Uh, City, though, do have a game in hand. We just changed some things around in the studio. It's magic chairs going on. If you can hear the squeaking, that's very subtle. Here we go. That's done. Perfect. That's Craig's back. That's Craig's back squeaking you were here, yeah, Exactly. Why did you have to swap oh. chairs? <laughs> oh, no, no, what it was, somebody was bringing, somebody was bringing in my notes. Really? <laughs> uh, Frank LaBeouf joins it's us. I saw this written down here. It said, please right. change chairs right. before the live show. Right. Shut up. Right, let's get on with this. Uh, uh, I'll to that. I'll to that. Uh, Liverpool then with a 4-1 victory. Liverpool are so good at the moment, Craig. Yeah, and Chelsea are so bad. Yeah. Uh, this nonsense about, <laughs> oh, Chelsea are on, uh, they're on, a, they're on a reasonable run, they're on, they're, on, they're on a winning streak. Yeah, they played nobody. Literally played no top teams, beat Newcastle in the cup, but that was penalties and the gift from, from Kieran Trippier. We'll get, I suppose we'll get to Chelsea in a bit. But yeah, Liverpool, you know, Sabah's lie back, Jota's form, Nunes could have hit the post four times. Yeah, I mentioned that. I was switching chairs at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but there was a squeak in my ear. I never heard it. Hit the post four times. Created, should, obviously, you know, should have been on the score sheet. Uh, created for others, as he does. And then you've got the young boy, Connor Bradley, who, look, he, he was just excellent going down that side. But Ben Chilwell on the left-hand side, giving the ball away oh. for the first. And then his position for the Connor Bradley goal. From a throw-in... He stood next to Badi Ashil, having a wrestling match with Diego Jota, mm. leaving an acre of space. He has no need to be tucked in so far. So, from all that, it played into Liverpool's hands. And, yeah, they're playing, they're playing great. Uh, they're scoring goals. They're coping with Mo Salah being away. Yep. Youngsters are coming in and doing well. The experienced players are coming back. Uh, Andrew Robertson came on uh, as well. and Trent Alexander-Arnold came on. Uh, yeah, it's it's the effect of Jurgen Klopp, as I thought at this moment in time, leaving has gone the positive way, yeah. not the negative. Yeah, very much so. And then we'll talk about Chelsea in a moment, but Frank. But if you're a Liverpool fan at the moment, you are loving everything you're seeing from your side. Definitely, definitely, because they have some injuries. They have big injuries. Uh, some players came back, like Robertson, Trent Alexander-Arnold in the second half. But but the players they they were in their in their position were absolutely fantastic. I mean I discovered Connor Bradley. The guy had two assists. If we can consider that the first pass for Jota is an assist, and a wonderful goal. Even if he slips, he can carries uh, carries on and he can carry on and, and score that goal. He was absolutely fantastic. Defensively did the job and he was working hard. Uh, up front Jota is on fire. We have to say the truth. The guy is really mm. on fire right now. So we, it's like we don't feel that Salah is not here. It's like we don't feel that Robertson just came back in the, and Trent Alexander-Arnold too. Um, in the middle of the park, they do the job. McAllister is there. Van Dijk and Konate are absolutely fantastic, tremendous. Uh, we, I feel that there is a real cohesion between the players. And it, it's like um, what Jurgen Klopp just said like a week ago, made them even better. They want to fight for him. There is a unity that I can feel there that they are quite invincible, especially when they play against a team uh, like Chelsea right now, which is very, very poor. They've got this swagger, they've got this belief, and the great thing is when you've got someone like Conor Bradley coming in, Shaka, yeah. who puts in that sort of performance, I know you're, you're waxing lyrical about it. It, it. it really was. I, I mean, that, the, the finish for, for his goal, I, I thought really was special. The way he hit it, how crisply he hit it. Kept it, kept it very low. No, no goalkeeper wants to deal with that. His all-round play, I, I thought, was just simply outstanding. 
you, you have to love everything you're seeing about, about Liverpool right now. And while, yes, Chelsea didn't do any favours in, in terms of making it difficult for Liverpool, to the point where, and Craig certainly commented on this uh, at the time, Jurgen Klopp is making changes with 20, 25 minutes ago. The game's won. That's how comfortable it felt. I know while you could hear Chelsea fans, well, those, those who, who want to be optimistic for, for whatever reason, saying, well, had that penalty been given on Nkunku, that makes it 3-2, and maybe thing, things change. But Jurgen Klopp is sitting so comfortably on that sideline, given everything that he's seeing, that he's giving players a rest 20 minutes ago. What, what does that say? When, when we're talking about a team like Chelsea, one of, one of the usual suspects in, in terms of who finishes at the very least top four. Um, but, but, but for Liverpool, I'm, I'm, I'm going to join Craig in saying that everything you, you've seen, two weeks ago it was how will they cope without Mo Salah? A week ago it was, well, Jürgen Klopp is leaving, how, how, how are they going <coughs> to react? And now, and if, if this is anything to go by, and again, opponent apart, you have to love the response of everybody. So that was the positive? That Liverpool are really, really looking like a team that has something to prove. And as you are hearing from the ESPN guys here, they are talking about how good they've been. Can you believe Nunes hit the post four times? That is crazy, by the way. So it means Liverpool should have at least beat Chelsea by eight goals to one. And somehow we talk about how good they are. And uh, you wonder what, like what Shaka is talking about, that the fact that Liverpool at 20 minutes, they're taking out four players in the game. That means he's actually resting players. That's what it was. That's what it meant to the world. That Klopp is saying that, you know, this game is done. Let me rest some players. And you're talking to a team in the man of Chelsea. One of the bigger teams that you have to put some respect on when you look at it. And Craig is talking about how terrible Chelsea are. He's really confused how that makes sense. But Liverpool are so good. Talking about a kid like Conor Bradley coming in, showing the world that he deserves to have that spot. Fighting for this thing. We're coming from injuries. They even mentioned it. But somehow you could not tell that Liverpool are coming from injuries. The way they were commanding the game. The way they were controlling the game. The way they were hurting Chelsea. All of these things just speaks nothing but how good this team is. Just talks about how much they are a threat, how much they can cause problems. It's amazing that we're even here, we're talking about how much they are like this. You can't hide but sing praises of this team because of what they're doing, because of how much they're implementing their styles, how much they're hearing these teams, how much they're showing that there's something to prove. I ran out of words yesterday when I was watching the game. I didn't expect it to be so good to that extent. We had seven draws in the before this game, seven draws with Chelsea, but it felt like it was men against boys. These guys haven't said it, but I know they will say it, that it felt like it was men against boys. For Liverpool to take it, it was like actually taking a this, taking out almost most of the players and saying that you should rest. Jota, go out, you should rest. You, you are tired, just rest. And putting out an, an entire different new team in after that, that was crazy. It tells you how much they are doing. They are just a team that is firing. It's just a team that is oozing with confidence. That are ready to hurt any teams. That are fighting for everything. And it's interesting that people are running out of excuses to use. And Shaka really made that very important. He said that last week they were talking how they're going to copy without Mo Salah. The week before, how are they going to copy without Trent Alexander? I know without Domin Sobosly. Now it's like, how are they going to do when Klopp is no longer there, knowing that Klopp is leaving? But every single time they keep putting performances like this and now that leaves you with so many questions exactly the excuses end up disappearing from few people's faces that tells you how much strong and how dangerous this liverpool squad is i don't know i want to hear your thoughts in the comment section as i continue with the espn guys i want you to tell me what did you think of liverpool and what do you see from them do you think that they're gonna be stopped this season what's gonna happen because what they are showing us is just out of this world Tiff? Well, should we, talk I about, I, I, should we talk about the negative? I tell you what, it doesn't bode well for the Carabao Cup final. Well, of course, yeah. Which we have, which is Chelsea Liverpool, uh, which means he's got a lot of thinking to do, not just for this Cup final, but between now and then. <sighs> I mean, he took Conor Gallagher off, and then he took Caicedo off. He could have taken, he could have done it in any way he wanted. I mean. He could have taken any of the midfield off, mm -hmm. right? He takes uh, Madweki off. I mean, let, let, let's let's go through what he had to do here. 
He took Madweke off. Uh, he put Sterling on the right. He then brought Mod Modric on the left. He shifted Cole Palmer back in for Conor Gallagher. He put Disasi, the right back, back to centre back. He put a centre back at left back. He took Chilwell off and he brought Malo Gusto on. I mean, <laughs> that's. <laughs> I mean. You did well there. I, did. I, was, I was really hoping for you to fall at some point. <laughs> I know you were. I know you were. And I was, I was, my brain was going there, racking my brain. And that's what he did. That was, that, noise. That was like rolling. That's how bad it was. He, he was like rolling everything. It was like a wheel, right? You go there and you go. I mean, honestly, and, and Badia Shale, who's not a left back, and Caldwell's been playing there, he's not a left back. Uh, and Chilwell played there as a left back and was terrible. But they're getting caught down in, in those areas. They're getting caught. And, and how you can let Diego Jota get through uh, through that gap between Silva and ba Badia Shield, I, I, I don't know, Shaq. I, I, I can't explain anything about Chelsea. I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I, at this point, nothing... I, I, say, I want to say surprise, but nothing disappoints me with Chelsea anymore. Because your I, expectations are so low. They are so low. And, and it, it feels as though we just kind of sit here and, and have the same criticism for, for, for players who cost a lot to turn in any kind of a performance. And from a manager who's very experienced to try and find some kind of solution to what was going on at Chelsea. And we are all seemingly as, as bemused as Pochettino. Nobody has any answers. And Chelsea just keep turning out these awful performances. Thank, thanks to, the, to the, the, the schedule they had, all of a sudden they put some results together. And maybe some people thought different, but, but nothing about the performances suggests that anything is, is going to get any better. And, 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 and that's a concern. Where does this turn around for Chelsea? Yeah. Or more to the point, how? Given the money they've spent, <coughs> what, what can Chelsea do or how much do they need to spend this summer to have them competing again? Because it, what we saw there is not an easy fix. It's not a one or two player fix. It, it's, we are talking into five, six, maybe even seven players before Chelsea look anything like a decent. Well, they got... Thiago Silva at the back, who they're not, not going to be there long, and he's still one of the stalwarts. Was he first on the team sheet? 39. What are they going to do? They're going to put, <laughs> you know, Colwell might go in there, you know, Badia Shale and Disa C, what, what, you know, Fofana maybe to come back. Is that filling anybody full of confidence? I mean, he was pretty honest, Pochettino, at the end in one of his interviews about, about the performance. And that's, that's fair enough. But questions are now going to have to be asked. Yeah. About him, I mean, we're talking about Ten Hag, who, you know, he's a, he's a place above uh, Pochettino, and I know he's been there uh, longer, but, we, you know, at the end of the day, I go back to it but, it, but it's true, if this was Potter in charge, without the resume, without, you know, the, 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 the fact that he's a foreign manager who's managed across a couple of countries and he's got more experience... He would be getting dragged through the coals at the moment, and I think this is going to be a problem for Pochettino, that they're almost in the bottom half of the Premier League with the money that they've spent, with players that we can argue about who's good enough and who's not, they're still better than where they are at the moment, this moment in time. And that performance again, 28 shots allowed by Liverpool, Man United away, who are not a good side, 28 shots they allowed in that game. They are wide open against the better teams. And this midfield, it's over a couple of hundred million. And I know they've got Lavia to come back. Oh, he hasn't really played any games. And maybe Liverpool are looking, oh, we, 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 we dodged a bullet here. Maybe yeah. Arsenal are looking, going, Mudrich, we dodged a bullet. Or maybe they're thinking, these teams, Do you know, we could have utilised those players better. Which one is it? Yeah. I, I don't know, because none of them... I think it's the former at the moment. None of them, yeah. Dan, are performing, particularly Caicedo, like he was at Brighton, where he was fantastic. Frank, what disappointed you... To be honest, you can't clearly disagree in what Craig is talking about. Because the problem is this. You cannot tell what Chelsea are going to give you in any game. Shaka said that there's nothing that disappoints him. And that is very terrible to hear from a pundit talking about there's nothing that will surprise me about Chelsea. Not in talking of winning, but in talking of losing. That tells you that you have nothing really to hope for. Talking about how this team is set up, how... There was a confusion. Craig, right there, he was trying to explain how Maurizio Pochettino was playing with this tactic. Because you can be shocked how it felt like maybe this was a 45 minutes. He decided to take out almost most of the four players in the team. Or was it three players that were taken out at half time? 
I saw him taking out Moises Caicedo, the way he rotated, that Chiwe came out and they had to put, the guy was playing as the right back to go play the left back, then they put, uh, the guy was going to be playing the left, the right back, and at the same time, try by means to remove the midfielder, taking out Conor Gallagher, putting, and I, it is really, really confusing, to be honest, to have an idea of exactly what the achievements are at the end of the day and what Chelsea really wants to achieve in the game. We are talking about people looking at this team and they can tell that there is nothing but terrible. You, there is nothing you can really hope for when you look at this team. In particular what they are giving us, in particular what they are showing us they can do. You are confused. You have no idea what exactly is this team's must. Like the final form, exactly what they are working towards, what they want to achieve at the very end. Because at this moment, nobody knows. And this is a team that has a manager who is supposed to produce something. This team has a manager who is trying to find the tactics. Is it because they are young? They are too young. They cannot copy. There is no stability in the midfield. They cannot create the best because they are only young kids that are in this ground. Or is it because Porichio position is just out of his depth? He cannot get the best thing he can provide to get this team actually playing and producing something because what we are seeing at this moment is just too painful to watch it's really really too painful to watch and i'm being told right now with something that i'm being told on the other end we are being told that this team could be in trouble because in four months if they're not able to raise 100 million pounds then they're gonna be in trouble because of financial fair play so it's it's really confusing how this management is managed to mess up the whole entire thing and how it seems like whatever they've created it's hard for these things to be set up together so that they work together to produce a better team because right now Maurizio Pochettino hate him or like him he's one of the best managers and in this point he has been put into management of a team which he did not set but which was found and he was told that these are the these are the pawns try to make something out of this try to make these things work exactly this is not something that he was in agreement to this is something that was set for him and he has to try to produce something out of it and there's no anyone who can say that history tells us of this these are all new players who are seeing what's happening here we cannot talk of sterling because when you talk of the history of chelsea sterling was still in man city tiago Silva, we can say yes he's been there for some time but he's the only one what can he do Riz james he can't even wear a, he can't even wear a boot to save his life he's always out with injuries there is a problem with Chelsea and we talk about they used to play a back three maybe that's why they used to play, play the back three because you cannot tell what they do and then they cannot defend to save their life I'm really disappointed if that's exactly what we saw it's really nothing but full of disappointment let me hear your thoughts in the comment section so that we hear what Frank Laboff has to say the most from Chelsea today <laughs> Almost everything. Uh, well, defensively, um, it's the first time and I can say that uh, uh, the four at the back, they were nowhere near it. And uh, even if Thiago Silva is better than the others, I found that uh, in the first goal and, uh, and the last one, he should have done better. Can you imagine that Petrovic had a good, go had a good game? It could have been worth. I mean, I, I lost 5-1 at mm. uh, Anf um, Anfield. It happened the first year uh, with Mr. Burley. Zola wasn't there. But, you know, the record signing was Frank Klobuchar with 2.5 million. It wasn't 100 million. It was 2.5 million. So maybe it weren't that good. But at least it was, it was what it was. It wasn't like expected. Uh, what we see right now is the team who doesn't know how to play together. When I, and Kuku came on, I saw a different player. I saw somebody who knows to play internationally. Mm. The other, they don't know. The other are mid-table players. I was insulted by a lady, if we can call that person a lady, on the social network last week because I was harsh on Chelsea. How do you want to be nice on Chelsea right now? What can you find about my former club to say, yes, we can believe, we can do something good? It's awful. It's appalling. It's everything wrong. Nothing's good. I don't know how they can cope in the Carabao Cup final. Yeah, maybe within a month, something's going to go better. We've been waiting for a year and a half to get better. Everything is working in a wrong way. So, yeah, I'm expecting something better. But when you start from so low, yeah, of course, it's going to get better.
How did you turn that into a humble brag about you being the uh, biggest transfer in that Chelsea squad, Frank? That's quite impressive. Um, I suppose yeah, if you're a Chelsea true. fan, as, as Craig mentioned, you could point to those penalty shouts. What did you think? Let's start off with the Gallagher one really early on, Frank. Did you think this was a penalty? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a penalty. Uh, it's light, but it is what it is right now. And really, I, I was really stunned that Mr. Cheney didn't go to uh, check the VAR. It, I, would, I wouldn't say that would have changed the game. I mean, mm. uh, it would have been maybe a little bit more difficult for Liverpool. But it, it's only for me fair that uh, there was a penalty for me. Uh, first of all, who on God's green earth attacked Prince Labo for actually speaking the truth? Because one thing you have to talk about is asking questions. That the team was way better before this new entire situation has been transformed. The way Chelsea looks like at the moment, the way they've turned everything upside down, the way they've uh, like rewrite the whole script of what football should be, it's, it's unbelievably unsettling. It's crazy how this team has come to this point where you cannot tell exactly if there's anything that is going to come. How can you be nice for to this team? How can you give any idea or any account of them being a good team when they're giving you nothing to even talk about? How can you be nice? How can you even be sure of what you're getting with this team? Because all the things that you get is nothing but pain, but pain and pain again. And it's painful that this keeps happening and I have no idea how far this will go. But, man, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. This team has to be, they have to find a way. Their supporters are crying. Everyone doesn't even know where to go, what to believe in, and actually how to look at this team. It's is crazy anyway i'm gonna do the last part of this video away it's a fan channel reaction like i told you that we're gonna be doing this thing there is something that was done by chelsea fan and i'm just gonna have to put it as part of this thing enjoy trust me okay guys i'm going to anfield for chelsea versus liverpool tonight but before i do i want to do a quick combined 11 of both sides and we're going to start with the goalkeeper now goalkeeper is tricky obviously Allison's had some great moments not just this season but in the Premier League but Petrovic has been on form Petrovic has been on fire and if you've been watching Chelsea games you'll know that Petrovic starts in goal so it was tight because of Allison's pedigree but we're going to edge it with Petrovic right back it's quite obviously going to be Marlo Gusto I mean Marlo Gusto has shown that he is probably the best right back in the league you know we lost Reese James he came in and he's shown that he is one of the best Centre backs. Now, the first centre back is going to be Thiago Silva. I could have gone Badia Shield, but he's had some sloppy moments in the last month. One of them is definitely going to be Thiago Silva. Oh, Monstro, legend of the game. Has to be our captain. I'm not sure how he's not, but he is one of the centre backs. The other one, it was really, really, really tight between Virgil van Dijk and uh, Axel Disassi. But you know what? I'm going to give it to van Dijk. I think he, he edges it just. It was a very, very close one. disassi has been great, but... You know what, Van Dijk is Van Dijk, you've got to hold your hands up. So Van Dijk gets in at centre-back. Left-back, Levi Colwell being prominent in left-back. So for me, I'd be inclined to put him in there. But Ben Chilwell's come back from injury and shown the world that he is a true left-back and not a left-winger like Pochettino likes to play him. So for me, left-back, no debate, has to be Ben Chilwell. Now, I think I'm going to go with a 4-3-3. So the three in midfield, I'm going to do them at the same time, just save some time. It was tough, you know, Liverpool have got some decent midfielders. Dominic's quite good. I'm not going to try and pronounce his surname. McAllister, you know, he's shown some glimpses here and there. But for me, it's going to have to be the Chelsea trio. We're going to go with Gallagher, Enzo and Caicedo. I think for me, they're the best balanced midfield, arguably in the league. They've got to be the three in midfield. So no debates there. Again, Liverpool, Endo, you know, was a shout, but he's just a knockoff Enzo. So I can't really put him in there. Um, and then the front three, the front three is going to be quite difficult. Obviously, Salah's not involved in this game. I think he's still injured, so we're not going to include Salah in this. Right wing, I mean, I would have liked to have played a 4 2 3 1 to include Palmer at the 10, but you know, he's still got good at right wing, so Cole Palmer slots in at right wing. If Salah was available, it might have been a bit closer, but Palmer at the moment, player of the season in the Premier League, so Cole Palmer, right wing. Left wing, there's a few options. I could say Sterling, but I'm not his biggest fan, so I'm going to say. Mikhailo Mudrik and Luis Diaz was an option there, but let's be honest, Liverpool haven't got the best front three. And up front, Nicholas Jackson, if he was available, he would make his way in the starting eleven. But we just heard that Nkunku's back, so who else but up front? Christopher Nkunku, Nunes would never get in. Jota, you might be saying, should get in, but unfortunately, 
He just hasn't got the minerals to get into this combined 11. So there it is. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> I have no idea how this is even legal to be on social um, social media. I have no idea how is this video still actually on social media. The fact that the guy has not removed it, it's it just speaks volume to the del delusion that is there with some Chelsea fans. This guy told us Malik Gusto is ahead of Alisson because he has the pedigree, is the best. He has proven that he's the best in the world in the in the Premier League. That's a combined eleven, by the way. And the guy said that he's gonna put um, what's, uh, what's his name? I think it's called Gusto or something. I don't know. He's the right back over Conor Bradley because. Bradley is a, is a no name. He, he doesn't deserve to be in there. Talks about Virgil van Dijk coming very close to be better than De Sassi. But talking of this season, Thiago Silva and the, all the people that are there for Chelsea defense cannot even speak to what Konate and Virgil van Dijk are doing. And somehow, somehow they had to feel sorry for Virgil van Dijk to be in. Left back. I dare you and I can tell you that Joe Gomez has been a better left back than all the left backs in, of Chelsea have been this whole entire season. Joe Gomez alone. Not even talking about what we saw from Tsimikasi. Even talking about what Robertson did before he got injured. It's crazy. And in the midfield, Conor Gallagher, Enzo Fernandez and Moises Kaiser are the best in the world. Dominic Soberslai, McAllister, and for example, Jones are just showing some glimpse of what they can be. We're talking about a team that is in the top of the league for Christ's sake. And this is what somebody who's team, which is by the, by the way, number 10 in the Premier League, is saying that they are the best in the world. I, I can't believe the delusion that I'm seeing from this is out of this world. Talking about the, the front three. Palmer is right back because Salah is injured so he cannot get there. Diogo Jota does not even have the minerals to talk to the uh, Makai Mondre and the other one that they are putting is Christopher Nkunku. Diogo Jota, that one is always, 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 he has more goals than the whole entire front three plus the assist of Chelsea combined. That's crazy people. That's crazy. I won't say more because you have the delusion people. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm out. Click the like button and subscribe to the channel.